bringing the vice president and George Lincoln, director of the Office of Emergency Preparedness, to survey the damage. I just talked to President Nixon less than a half an hour ago after I finished the briefing session, and he's terribly concerned. He was in an earthquake himself. He happened to be going to Whittier College in 1933 when the Long Beach earthquake occurred. And of course, he, uh, he remembers very well the collapse of the high school auditorium there, the damage to the grade school, and uh, he said, if you don't want to be in another one if you've been in one. Already, the presidents proclaimed the earthquake zone a major disaster area, with all agencies of the federal government directed to render maximum assistance. Downtown, both state and federal people are working hard to deliver it. And a new Disaster Relief Act, just signed by the president, has given them new tools to work with. Federal assistance is no longer limited to helping restore essential community services. Now it's been broadened to bring relief to individuals, the disaster victims as well. And six one-stop disaster assistance centers are being set up, where they can go to find it. Temporary housing, rent-free, for those in direst need. Aid on mortgages and rents for others in danger of losing their damaged homes. Legal services, liberalized small business and farmers' home loans. Unemployment insurance, re-employment aid for those whose jobs have been wiped out. Food stamps and surplus foods for the hungry. Help in removing debris from private property. San Fernando still on its knees. No water. No water? None. No water, no gas. All water in the San Fernando Valley and the city of San Fernando is contaminated, and citizens are advised to boil drinking water. You don't have any water at your house? It's not good at all. It's terrible. Really? I live in Van Nuys, and I came all the way here to get some water, but it's so terrible. Already, a call has gone in to Joseph Quinn, Deputy Mayor of Los Angeles, asking if San Fernando can borrow from the city's water system. Now go ahead and hook them up. Uh, do everything you can to help. We'll worry about the legal question later. Yeah. And downtown. What are we doing about the situation? The Corps of Engineers are already moving in, sir. We are laying temporary water and sewage lines right down the center of the street. Now help's arriving from another source. The Civil Air Patrol. It's heard of San Fernando's plight. And rescue air supply, and communications units from wings all over Southern California are pouring in to lend a hand till the emergency's over. Gradually, the town's gaining ground. The evacuation center has been set up at San Fernando Recreation Park. Two major relief centers have been set up in San Fernando by Salvation Army in the downtown area, Red Cross in the stricken Mexican-American section, to supply food, clothing, shelter. Another night in shelter. Van Norman still too full for safety, and the natives are getting restless. Continual aftershocks are keeping everyone nervous, on edge. And the emergency control center at police headquarters is being overloaded with calls. To relieve the strain, a citizen's information center is set up by civil defense in the public works hearing room at Los Angeles City Hall. Emergency control. The school, just a moment, I have a list of schools right here. 
In a way, California's been lucky. It's been a medium-sized quake, even minor, compared to what could happen someday. But if the shock had come a few hours later in the morning, when schools were full and freeways crowded, the death toll might have reached the thousands instead of 65. But more than 30 schools in Los Angeles alone will have to be demolished and replaced. The freeways rebuilt. A billion dollars worth of damage repaired. For the federal government, it means a record-breaking expenditure under the new Disaster Relief Act. Nearly half a billion to restore essential services and help people get back on their feet. And a long way to go before it's done. At Veterans Hospital, rescue workers are into their 59th hour. Hey, we got a live one. The last live victim to be pulled out of the wreckage, Frank Carbonara, a 68-year-old baker on the kitchen staff, is rushed to the hospital, his anxious family brought to his side. Did you ever give us any hope? Yes, we did. Yes. How do you feel now? Nervous and shaky. Yes. You are related? Yes, my father. Did you ever get up any home? I'm afraid we did last night. Did you? Yes, he's been in there for 59 hours, and he has him for such of emphysema, and we were really worried it was dusty and dirty down there. What is, what is it? And in Chicago. Oh, this is I guess he's just a strong man. I don't know. What did he think about while he was down there? Frank, what did you think about when you were down there? What were you thinking of when you were down in there? I was good. Now, finally, the pumps have done their job. Attention, folks. Good news. Van Norman Reservoir is down. You are now free to return to your homes. Going home, but often to things like this. Still, well, now that you've lived through it all, how do you feel? I'm, I don't think little trivial things are gonna matter worth a damn anymore. Going home. And so, in a different way, are the 36 patients and 10 members of the staff lost at Veterans Hospital. Charles Preston George. Salvador B. Gonzalez. Winfield Greer. A final service for old soldiers who aren't supposed to die, but only fade away. William H. Miranda. Donald 